from Television City in Hollywood. Barry Nelson. Peter Laurie. Linda Christian. Starring in tonight's production of Climax. A great new hour-long dramatic series from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, William Lundigan. Good evening. This doesn't look dangerous, does it? But it's killed plenty of men and women. It's made beggars of many and millionaires of a few. Mighty few. In French gambling casinos, this is called a shoe. It holds the cards for Baccarat, king of gambling games, and its purpose is to make sure that no one can pull any funny business like dealing from the bottom. The game to be played tonight is for the highest stakes of all. A man is going to wager his life. Climax presents Casino Royale from the bestseller by Ian Fleming. Stars Barry Nelson, Peter Lorre, and Linda Christian. And now, Casino Royale. I wouldn't know how. You were so lucky to miss. You did try to rob you, sir. tried to kill me. Well, I'll never catch him now. If he will please come into the office, sir. What was all the racket? Someone taking pot shots? What? Oh, I wouldn't know. Yes, someone was shooting. The casino is full of apologies, Mr. Bond. Such an act is beyond explanation. You had not begun to play, so it was not your winnings they were after. Yeah, it wasn't my autograph either. Well, you have our assurement. The casino police will be at your disposal whenever you feel you need protection. Thanks, thanks. That's, that's very comforting. Look, uh, would you give me some chips? Why, certainly, Mr. Bond. Seven at the bank, and three. The bank is half a million francs. Half a million? Uh, I beg your pardon, but how much is that? Oh, that's about um, $1,500. That's uh, 500 pounds, your British money. Banco Suivi. You know, this game fascinates me, but I just can't get the hang of it. Well, it's like any game. You win or you lose. No cards. Oh, fine. <clears throat> Eight at the bank, and a six. He lost. Aren't you the fellow who was shot? Uh, no, I'm the fellow who was missed. You happen to see it? No, I just heard about it. A bank of one million. Banco. Banco, now what's that mean? I've matched the bank. For a million? Nine at the table. And back around. Well, it looks like you're as lucky as they say. Eh? Oh, you're a legend, old boy. Card sense Jimmy Bond, they call you. I knew you right away. Well, I didn't know I had that much of a reputation. Oh, my dear fellow, look here. How about you give me the lowdown? How to play? Over a drink? Oh, I'm very sorry. My name's Clarence Leiter. Well, sure. What have I got to lose? Do you ever lose, old boy? Buzz over there, lead on. Monsieur Le Chief, the bank is open. Tomorrow. Very lucky you, Mr. Bond. Yes. And very handsome. Tell me, has he changed much since the days when you two were... He looks just the same. Uh-huh. Do you want me to talk with him now? Plenty of time. I'll tell you when. Good evening, gentlemen. 
Scotch? Yes, the water. Two scotch, one water, one soda. Bring a deck of cards? Yes, sir. You know, I've seen you before. I watched you play at Deauville when you cleaned up the Maharaj of... What was his name? That, that was Baccarat, wasn't it? Yes. You know, it must be a fascinating game, but to me it's as baffling as American football. Well, it's very easy. It's a lot like 21. It's mostly luck, anyway. You were lucky tonight to escape those shots. Light? It looks like the shipper is on to. I wondered when you'd show up. I was on my way out to wait for you at the hotel. I'm attached to Station S, British Secret Service. We're working in conjunction with the Desium Bureau and your own chaps of Combined Intelligence Agency in Washington. Oh, well, it seems that we have a uh, good many friends in common. Yes, doesn't it? Oh. Your cards, please. Thanks. And uh, keep the change. Thank you, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Lighter. No, you go ahead. You explain Baccarat, and I'll explain your job here. Uh, one player buys the bank. He puts up all the money. Everybody plays against him. They can play for part of it or all of it. Not a bet against the whole bank. You go banco, like I did just now. You know you're here to deal with Herr Zipper, Le Schiffer. He's the same fellow. Deal with? You mean kill him? You won't have to. He'll die anyway, if you play your cards right. Have you ever seen the shipper? No. Go on explaining the game. Well, you each get two cards, the banker and the dealer. Picture cards and tens count nothing. The other cards carry their own face value. Le Chiffre is the toad-like creature, playing at the table in there. He's the chief Soviet agent for this area, controlled through Leningrad Section 3 through Paris. And he's the most dangerous man they've ever had. You can look now. He's a fanatic. He's ruthless, incorruptible, and everything he does is entirely legal. But he has a weak spot, and that's how you got into it. Oh, you, now you see, the uh, object of the game for is to get as near nine as possible. Say I got an ace and a two. That's three. Well, that is not enough. I ask for another card, I draw a six. That makes nine in all. Now, if the banker has nine in it as well, it's a tie. Otherwise, we start all over again. That's ingenious. No, I mean, wait, Nearest to nine there. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't kill the chief. What do I do to him? His weak spot is gambling. You're going to play Baccarat with him, and your job is to clean him out. For what reason? To destroy him. He's been gambling with Soviet funds in his last 80 million francs. Now he's going to try and get it back by gambling high. He's bought the bank for tomorrow night with the last funds of the treasury of his party. He has 26 million with which to win back the 80 he needs. Soviet police know about his gambling? They got wind of it. And that's one reason why he's planning to play high tomorrow night. Now, if he should win back that 80 million, maybe he can brazen it out. But if you've won and he hasn't... Then what? We'll see that the story hits the newspapers. We've photostats of his bank statement all the dope. The French Communist Party will lose face with a very dull thud, and we'll have accomplished our aim. We'll be rid of the ship. Uh... <clears throat> now, you... You know, you each allowed draw only one card. All right, what else? You will have 26 million francs, the same as he has. I'll pick it up for you from the casino cashier and give it to you tomorrow night. Well, that's hardly a safe margin. You've won unless, so you play tomorrow night. And meanwhile, watch your step. They could kill you. They've already tried. What, uh, what else do I have to know about him? He's tough, he's good with a gun, carries three razor blades for slashing purposes. There's one in his hat band, there's one in the heel of his left shoe, one in his cigarette case. And he always has three armed guards with him. They're with him now, you can look. You see them? The big fellow with the blonde hair, that's Basil. The fellow who looks like a basset hound, the one who walked past us now, that's Zoltan. There's a third character there. He's the thin, dark fellow, see him? Name of Zurat. They're in it as deep as he is, so be very careful of them. Oh, incidentally, the whole bunch of them are in the suite right above yours at the hotel. 
Oh, well, then that's who bugged my room. Bugged the microphone, you mean? Yes, I think I have got it. Could be a four or five, nearest to... Oh. Mr. Barnes, don't you remember me? Valerie. Valerie Mathis. We met in a casino at Biarritz. Yes, of course. You were my lucky charm. While you were there, I couldn't lose. Oh, uh, there's Mr. Clarence Leiter, Miss Mathis. Delighted. I do. I was just teaching Mr. Leiter how to play baccarat. I saw you. I think I've learned it like a book. Perhaps I could try it out tonight. Oh, well, all right, but don't blame me. <laughs> well, it's nice to have met you, Miss Mathis. Uh, you wouldn't care to be my lucky charm. I'd love it, but I must return to the hotel. Oh, me too. Then perhaps we can go together. Well, if you, if you don't mind going through a barrage of bullets right now, I'm not a very good risk. So it was you those men were shooting at. But why? Maybe they needed the practice. Let's go. Good luck, uh, Lighter. And to you. Tomorrow. Pardon, Mr. Le Chief. You reserve the bank for tomorrow night. Do you still want it? Hmm? Tomorrow, yes. Entendu, monsieur. Good night. Oh. The fifth floor, sir. Yes, you, you said you were on the sixth. I'll, I'll see you to your room. I'd rather see you to your room. Why would I argue with that? Down, please. Did you expect your room to be searched? No, I, I don't know what anyone would find. It's just you can't be too careful. You live dangerously. Dangerously? Gambling? Depends on how and where. wires go through the chimney to his room just above here? I didn't know. I look at you. You can't lie to me. You never could. I didn't know. When was it fixed? Today. While I was out. To listen to you. If you didn't know about it, to listen to you. He sent you here, but he doesn't trust you. He wants to be sure that you ask for things he sent. Jimmy, listen to me. I'm going to. And so is he. You're going to tell me those things right now, word for word. But who's fooling who? Huh? Jimmy, don't turn down the music. Well, that's no. better. Oh, Chopin, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, you were saying, Valerie? Jimmy, you used to love me. I loved you, too. Well, you haven't written in a year. There were reasons why I couldn't. So what do you want to do now? Pick up where you left off? I've come to say you mustn't play against Le Chiffre. Oh, so you know that, do you? I'm begging you not to, Jimmy. You're a member of Combined Intelligence who fronts as a gambler. He'll kill you. She plays her part good. So you know that too, do you? If you don't think of yourself, think of me. I did love you. I still
don't do. Would I be begging you not to play if I didn't? You might. So please, please go to Paris while you're safe. If you ever loved me. Maybe I didn't. Yes, there's that, of course. You know, women can lie as well as men. Is that uh, all you want to say? Go ahead, speak up. That's all. I'm going to my... Valerie, wait. Maybe I did love you once. But not now. I'll, uh... I'll see you to the elevator. Don't. Wait. <laughs> Music lover. Well, that, uh, that was quite an act. Not all of it. Which part of it was true? That the Schiffer will kill you. All right. He will kill you. Well, you've done your job well, Valerie. I hope he pays you well. Jimmy, I still love you. But the Schiffer will kill well, you. Well, you can tell your employer he's wasting his time. I got... Sixth floor, I guess. For the lady. Come in. Come in, beautiful. Well? Why the tears? I've done my job. Now I'm going to my room. You stay here. Turn it on again. And, uh, you see, Valerie, we have a microphone in Bond's room. Uh, you were once to, so close to him. I, I just wanted to make sure about your present feelings. Oh, but you came through magnificently. Any suspicions I might have had were, uh, were quite unfounded. I did all you asked. Admirably. Perhaps, uh... Perhaps even a little more. What do you mean? Mm. Nothing. I I was just wondering how your lipstick got smudged. <laughs> oh, I, I have no objections to your being kissed by a man you once loved, but uh, it does open up an interesting angle of speculation, which is... Um, does he still love you? You said you heard. Yes, but I couldn't see, and you could. What does it matter? Oh, it could matter very much. Bond and I on opposite sides of the fence. Hello. Uh, uh, would you get me the casino, please? The chef de partie. Hello. Hello. This is James Bond. Yes. Look, uh, what you said about the police. I'd like them to keep close watch on me until after tomorrow night's game. I will give instructions immediately, Mr. Bond. Good night. Good night, Mr. Bond. always been able to protect myself. Now they choose Mr. Bond to take me on, and and your Mr. Bond is very lucky, and and Mr. Bond has card sense, and I don't like it. Tell me, uh, does he still love you, Valerie? Of course he doesn't. Not now. Because, you see, tomorrow, tomorrow night I have to win. I have to have 80 million francs, and no one is going to stand in my way, you hear? No one. Four thirty two, please. In Dieppe. Hello. Hello, Mr. Rudy, please. Hello, Mr. Rudy, this is Leiter speaking. I just wanted to make sure that you had that story written. Yes, it'll be later this evening. Will you be there when I call? No, I, I don't know what time. The game might go on quite late. It's very hard to tell. Yes, I wish you would. I'd rather you handle it yourself. 
The story should be in the Paris newspapers at the same time, don't you think? Oh, good, good. Yes, now all we've got to do is hope that he wins. Yes, yes, I will, and thank you very much. I'll ring you as soon as I have definite news. Goodbye. Mr. Leiter? That money you have, would you kindly put it on the table? I believe it to be 26 million francs. We want it. That makes it very awkward, because I want it too. You have exactly 10 seconds to do as I say. It's quite all right, thank you. I think the call's for me in any oh, case. Oh, just a moment. Will you do me a kind favor? Will you take this money to the cashier, tell him to hold it for Mr. Bond, who'll pick it up later this evening? Why, certainly, Mr. Leiter. Thank you very much. Why don't you pick it up? It might be for you. Twenty-six million francs. Correct, sir? That's correct. Yes, sir. Well, Leiter, how'd you make out last night at uh, Baccarat? I lost my shirt. Maybe you're a bad teacher. Cigarette. Good luck, and make sure you clean him out. Thanks. Sorry you lost your shirt. Mr. Bond, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Sir James Bond, had Sipper. I've always heard of you as uh, a ship. Well, that's the same, you see. Uh, it's a nickname of mine. After the war, I was a displaced person, just a, a number on a passport. Uh, Le Schiffer means a mere cipher. Seemed a suitable name. May I say you're a very important cipher? You flatter me, sir. Uh, we play tonight, huh? Good luck. Thanks. And to you. Valerie. Excuse me, beautiful. Mm. I kept your number six for you, Mr. Bond. Good evening. Oh, Lord Danvers. Mr. Bond, you wanted on the telephone. Mm. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. Mm. Your pardon me, sir? Hello. <clears throat> this is Bond. Yes, Mr. Bond. This is a friend. Who? Mr. Bond, it may be that you still have a certain attachment for a young woman by the name of Valerie Mathis. You should know, if you win tonight, she will lose. Oh, nothing more important than her life. This, uh... This young lady is part of your own organization. Why should it concern me if she dies? Well, perhaps it does not. But the fact is still indisputable. If you win, she will lose her life. Pardon me for interrupting your game. I only wish to pass on the warning. Goodbye. Pardon me, have you finished with that phone? Keep an eye on that girl, Valerie Mathis. Keep an eye on her. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Cigarette, Valerie? No, thank you. The game is back around. Ladies and gentlemen, a bank of one million francs. The bank is one million francs. Banco. No card. Nine at the bank. And seven. The bank of two million francs. Banco Suivi.
card. Seven at the bank. And four. A bank of four million francs. No. No. Bunko. Nine at the table. Bakara. Sir. Continue. A bank of two million francs. Bunko. Seven at the bank, and five. A bank of four million francs. Back up, sweetie. Nine at the bank, and seven. Bank of eight million francs. Back of Sweden. Six at the bank, and three. A bank of sixteen million. Back us with it. Nine at the bank, and seven. You have beaten him. It was the last of his money. I need 80. You won't lose tonight. A bank of 32 million francs. <coughs> this is for you, Mr. Barnes. Bank of thirty two million francs. A bank of thirty two million francs. Ladies and gentlemen, a bank of thirty two million francs. Oh. Please wait. Your pardon, Mr. Bond. The sum is so big, I will have to count the arms. Right, go on, count it. Thanks. The game continues. Excuse me, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, a banco of 32 million francs. Mm -hmm. All right.
three at the back. And four. You lost. Huh? You lost a fortune. Oh, I still have 23. But now he can afford to lose. I may win. Sir, the bank is broke. Continue. Just a moment. A bank of 23 million francs. Sweetie. Nine at the table. Back around. Oh. A cane is in your bag, but it is a gun, not a cane and can blow the space of your spine without a sound. You will appear to have fainted. I shall be gone. Before I count ten, you will accompany me to the office and give me the money. If you call for help, I shall fire. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mr. Sorry, huh? Mr. Take care of those sheep, would you? Yes. What's, what happened to Miss Matthews? Miss Matthews was standing right there beside Mr. Lachie just a minute ago. Is this your cane, sir? They're gone. Yes, they are. Well, no, I just heard the news. Great. Yes, sir. 35 million turned the trick. Where's Miss Matthews? I, I, I don't know. I lost sight of her in the excitement. Wait. Look, I even followed her to the cashier's when she went to get that money for you. Wait. When she went to get the... You mean that 35 million every came penny, from her? Every penny of it. I don't know where she went later. Wait a minute. Oh, Mr. Bond, uh, the chips have been counted. 87 million francs in all. Oh. I made it out of the check. It is safe for that one. 35 of it belongs to Miss Mathis. Where is she? Oh, I think she's left the casino, sir. Alone? Look, search the terrace, the bar, everywhere. Yes, and don't forget to put that check somewhere safe. Sure. You put this in Scotland Yard's Black Museum. Well, where did you get this? Mr. Bond's can. Shall I shake it, sir? No, thank you. Have you seen Miss Mathis? No. Everybody's asking me about Miss Mathis. She must be a very popular young lady. Who is she? Who else was asking for her? Mr. Bond asked for I her. I know about him. Anyone else? Mr. Lechiffre, too. Oh, he did, did he? Well, you know, he was a heavy loser. So it, perhaps he needed a young lady's sympathy. Yes, it could be. Well, thanks, anyway. Miss Mathis! Miss Mathis. Miss Mathis. Oh, I, I am sorry. Forgive me. Where is Miss Mathis? Pardon, sir? I said, where is Miss Mathis? This gun is completely silent, I suppose. Sir. Where is Miss Mathis? She has left the table. Then where is the ship? Sir, where I... is the zipper? I don't know who you are and why you are questioning me, but I know that La Chiffre went back to the hotel. Operator. Operator. I did not bring the young lady up, sir, but of course there are other elevators. Sure, sure. Six, sir. The young lady's number is 65. Oh, yes. Hello, hello. 
ring James Bond at his hotel for me, will you? Hello. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy, it's lighter. Have you hidden that check yet? Well, no, I was looking for Valerie. Did you find her? No, I haven't yet, but the ship's on his way across there. Maybe just to pick up his bags, I wouldn't know. But while that check's still around, you're still hot. All right, I'll take care of it right now. You keep after Valerie. You, uh, you have Miss Mathis, is that it? Will you pass over that check? No, I don't think so. The <laughs> chief is with Miss Mathis. Stand still, Mr. Bond. I said stand still. Close the door and put on the lights. Well, it, it seems we have a few points of mutual interest to discuss, huh? Such as, uh, such as that check for 87 million francs. Money which was partly supplied by the French Secret Service through its agent, our little friend Valerie. Yes. <laughs> Valerie Mattis, agent of the Dersian Bureau. Huh? Oh, I only found that out today. Of course, you would have died at once, but I thought I... I hold the threat of your life over this uh, American. Not that he seemed to care. He, he still put his job first. He had to. Maybe. Maybe in any case it was a mistake. If I would have known that the French had supplied you with funds in case you needed more money. Valerie, Valerie, why didn't you tell me you were with the French? Oh, I... I think I can answer that. Oh, as you most certainly know, Mr. Bond, no secret agent can ever be quite sure what another agent isn't working for the other side. Although I... I always thought that mutual love means mutual trust. Do you love me, Jimmy? <laughs> he is much too sensible to answer that. In any case, neither of you wants the other to be hurt, huh? Very comfortable considering the fact that I... that I want that check for 87 million francs. Yes, Mr. Mond, you have almost destroyed me. You have almost succeeded, in fact, my life depends upon finding that check. So bad a way does yours. Well? Oh, Basil, you're so clumsy. I, I just asked you to hit him. I, I didn't ask you to hit him so hard. Hey. Easy, not so hard. <laughs> tough man, huh? Very tough. Well, if he fights again, hit him again, huh? But please, only a little at a time. Now, Mr. Bond, as you might have noticed, we, we are very serious people. Your good health is of no concern to us whatsoever. Answer that. Pick him up. And just in case you get ambitious, Mr. Bond, believe me. Hello? Hello? Jimmy, it's lighter again. Have you found Valerie yet? 
Yes, yes, she's here. Oh, good. Then everything's fine, eh? Ah, uh, has uh, the shipper run for it? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, he will. I'm getting out of the papers, giving them the whole story. So I'll say good night. Lighter. Yes, what is it? Nothing. It's okay. I... Sorry you lost your shirt. Oh, you're a pal. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe he'll talk to you tomorrow. But only if you have given us that check. It took me long enough to win it. Take you longer to get it back. I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. It's about time we stop joking, huh? I, I think he's ready for the bathtub. Oh, pardon me, beautiful eye. I didn't mean to neglect you, no. Who knows, maybe... Maybe you can persuade him, huh? <laughs> Basil. Hey, Basil. Take her in. Uh, but if she screams, at her first scream, he's dead. All right, Mr. Vaughn. Where's that money? Look, Mr. Bond, as you should know by now, I, I'm quite without mercy, and if you continue to be that obstinate, I, I'll have to torture. You'll be tortured to the edge of madness. Believe me, you have no hope whatsoever, you hear? None. Nor has she. You're an ugly little man. Why don't you stop talking? All right. See this tool, Mr. Bond? Very handy little tool. Serves all sorts of purposes. Oh, uh, my little friend, you remember the, the one that had a gun that passed for a cane? Oh, he was an expert with his. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's gone, but uh, I've learned a few of his tricks. Now, Mr. Bond, are you going to tell me where that chick is? You won't, huh? All right. I think I know how to make it, Dale. Excruciating, huh? Look, Mr. Bond, if you if you continue like this, I. I have to start on poor Valerie. You leave me no choice, I... I cannot let you destroy me. I've already destroyed you. You think so, huh? I'm no hero. I don't like pain. But I can tell you one thing right now. You won't get anything out of me. Pain and killing's part of my job. And of mine, too, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I'll bet you love it. How did you find that out, huh? <laughs> Oh, you're an obstinate man, Mr. Bond. But I... I think, I think you've had enough, huh? Where's that money? What's the difference? It's a check. The police will trace it to you. Oh, please, please, don't worry about that. That's very easy, you see. The story will be that after our little game at the casino we made, and you being such a good sportsman, you turned it over to me, you lost, so therefore you signed the check over to me, huh? That's simple, huh? Now, where's that money? Where is it? I know you've hidden it. Hidden it somewhere here in this suite. We searched it, but you're very clever. Now, where is it? All right. Oh, uh... Zuro, you better go downstairs because, uh, you see Mr. Lighter might arrive and I'm... Quite certain he'll, he'll be very upset when he sees his friend after we are finished with him. Go ahead, Basil, and, and this time you don't have to restrain yourself. Stop! Stop! I, I'll tell no, you. Where is it? She doesn't know. I know something. When I came in, I saw he was holding a screwdriver. Oh, Valerie, shut up! Screwdriver? Where could he use a screwdriver? Where, where could he use a screwdriver? Where did you use it? 
find it yourself. All right. All right. Have it your way then, Mr. Bond. We have searched your rooms. Now we are going to take them apart. And if I don't find it, we'll take you apart. Both of you. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I couldn't stand what they were doing to you. Darling, you're very brave. I couldn't be not like that. No. Keep watching. Warn me if they move. Go talk. Keep talking. Talk. Whatever yeah. happens, I want you to know that I've always had one memory. And I always have one desire. To go away somewhere with you. Somewhere quiet where we used to go, where the fields and hills. Do you remember? It seems long ago. I thought, I thought I'd never seen anything so beautiful and peaceful and the warm, sweet scent of cut hay. To lie in the fields and look up at the sky and there would be nothing but Laughter and, and love. The way it was. Hey, the oh, door. I, I remember the door was open. On the outside. Try the number plate. Hey! Here it is. We found it. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Phew. Huh? Can I have some water? Mm, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> with pleasure. Bath will give him all the water he wants. Get me some water, too. Hey! Oh! <laughs> A bath on. Hey, Basil. What's the matter? Hmm. Why don't you, huh? <laughs> Be fair, Mr. Bond. It's all <laughs> I've lost. Jimmy. Give me the check. Huh? Come on. Call the police. <laughs> <laughs> See how the game goes, huh? <laughs> Interesting, huh? You know, suddenly I, I find a great desire to live. <laughs> what are you going to do, Mr. Bond, huh? What are you going to do? Well, if you want that check that badly, just pull the trigger, but then, then you lose your beloved Valerie, and, and if I live, believe me, I'll lie about everything. And I can lie much better than you. Much, much better. So you see, either way, I win. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Why don't you pull that trick? Thank you, Mr. Bond. Hey.
Brings you the Broadway smash hit, Landonier. Our stars next Thursday will be Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Gene Nelson, Sherry North, and as a special attraction, Mario Lanza. Incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, delegates from all over the world are now meeting in Chicago with the 42nd National Safety Congress. We salute the Congress and its accident prevention work. And I'd like to ask each one of you to help, too, by being careful. And now until next Thursday and Landonier, this is William Lundigan saying good night and thank you.